Hello, it's Tommy Hodgins, and today I'm going to show you how we can invent our own custom CSS at rules and use them for pretty much whatever we want. Now, today what I've got is a custom JavaScript bundler that has the option when you build things to pass in a different build ID or some kind of a string or something that identifies the build. So I'll show you what I'm working with here, and then we're going to invent a CSS at rule that helps us do our work, and I'll show you how that works. So here I have a JavaScript file and a CSS file. So let's say I'm working in these two files and I want to wrap them and bundle them into one JavaScript file that we can serve. So currently this includes the CSS from our CSS file and it includes our JavaScript from our JavaScript file. So when we wrap this with um, a build variation, so here I've used the variation test you can see that it comes out with variation test. It's going to add that as a data attribute to the HTML element. And so what that allows us to do here, um, you know, we could do wrap one. We've got variation one. We can do wrap two. We've got variation two. So if we're writing logic, it's really easy for us to say if variation is one, um, you know, do stuff for var1. And we can copy this and we can do stuff for uh, you know var2. Um, we can even use different types of logic and say something like um, you know for variation 3, 4, and 5 as long as sum build equals the variation um, you know, this would work for variations three, four, or five. So in JavaScript, we have a lot of flexibility for conditionally including stuff um, and then outputting this. We've got a variation and the logic can use that. I need to save it for it to work. So here we have build variation five and then this is gonna work inside there. For CSS, on the other hand, all that we've been able to do, we have to do this. Um, and then, you know, if we wanted to say uh, the body background is red for this, and for variation, we would say data variation in a space separated list includes one. And then you can put, you know, the same kind of rule. And so now when you build this for build variation one, it's going to have this CSS. We're um, going to target this data attribute that's added to the HTML element. And so this rule will apply. But as you can see, this kind of logic here is very verbose. So to do this type of thing, you end up copying the thing and saying, you know, for uh, three, four, or five, do this other thing. And so if you've got a lot of different CSS styles that you're trying to divide by these variations, this is just a lot of noise. So getting rid of the JavaScript here for a second, what can we do in CSS to organize this? And how can we process it so that, you know, it'd be great if we could even have it only output the specific things that we need. So the first most obvious idea to me is like, if you had this, let's say there's two rules for variation, um, body and h1, just as an example. I think it would be nice if you could somehow do something like in JavaScript, you know, if the variation is one, and then just wrap this kind of thing. And so my question is, what in CSS kind of looks like that? It's not a rule, like this isn't a selector with these rules inside, that's not really what's happening, but it does kind of look like an at rule. So an at rule is like a media query or a feature query, anything that starts with the at. So what if we say at variation one? Now this is valid in CSS syntax, but this is not an existing thing in CSS. This is not supported. No browser will parse this and keep it. 
Um, essentially, though this is valid in the CSS language, this does nothing. And so it's actually not safe for us to invent this. Um, what we should do, you know, if we were Mozilla or something and inventing this, we could add our own vendor prefix, or if we were uh, Chrome, we, we could add the uh, WebKit. But we're supporting it ourselves. And so because this is custom, there is no vendor prefix. We are the vendor. So we're gonna start this with a double dash to make sure that no uh, thing that we invent and support could ever collide with a possible, potential, future, real CSS thing. So for designing this custom thing, we're gonna do at dash dash variation. And then the question is, can we support something like one uh, to match this build variation? So I'm gonna go ahead and remove those and I'm going to run this through the tool that I built and then I'll show you how it works. So here I'm going to use Deno, which is a JavaScript runtime similar to Node that runs on the command line it's going to load this JavaScript file that has the support for this custom at rule in it. And we're gonna process this file that we have open. Now, the next thing that I'm gonna give the argument is going to be the build variation. So when I include support for this in our bundling tool that I showed you earlier, um, it will have knowledge of the variation passed in from that. So this isn't eventually gonna be something we use from the command line. This is just a demo of that functionality in isolation. So the next thing we pass in is gonna be the build variation, which I'm gonna say is one. And to get rid of the annoying message that it puts, I'm gonna say allow read. So now here I have, we fed one in as our argument and we ended up with this first rule and these two rules because it was one. So it would stand to reason if we had something like two and this was orange and 99 or something. If we go here and change it to two, now it's not including the lime and the 10 from variation one, it's including the rules from variation two. So these don't even make it. Um, it's just the regular CSS and anything in one of these rules. And so now the question is, um, does this allow us some flexibility for something like a three, four, and five? Um, I'm just gonna stick that there. Um, if we build this with three, we get that. If we do it with four, we get that. And if we do it with five, we get that. So let's see how this is working because we've been able to implement very simply in 100% valid CSS, um, our own custom at rule to do whatever we wanna do. So hopping over here, the actual meat of it is just 25 lines here. So the first thing I'm doing is we're bringing in parse CSS to parse CSS. This is the script that Deno is running. We start off with an empty string of data and a variation. And because we're running those with Deno, um, we don't even need this if around here. So the variation is that second argument. The first one is used to read the CSS style sheet. So we do both of those things and update variation and data with what we found then the only thing that this does is log back to us the result of this logic. So this is going to be all of supporting our custom at rule. This is it, all on the screen at one time. So to parse CSS, we're gonna take that file that we read, parse the entire thing as a style sheet, and then we're gonna loop over each rule. Um, we pass in each rule individually, and this rules argument here is the accumulator for the reduce function. So this is where all the result is gonna end up. 
So when we find stuff we want to keep, we pass it to rules, which you can see we do here, here, and then we return all of the current ones, each iteration. So for each rule that we go through, if the rule is an at rule, we do a whole bunch of this stuff. If the rule is not an at rule, we just pass it through as it is. If it is an at rule, and if the name of that at rule is variation, then we'll do this. But in every other case, we just pass it through. So now, we only want to pass through the child rules of the at rule with the variation that has a prelude that matches that build variation that we know about from the command line argument or from JavaScript. So this logic here says, the prelude to the at rule is the part that comes after the name but before the group body rule. Um, and so when I'm writing things like this, that's white space one white space, or white space three comma white space four, and it wouldn't really matter, you'll see, the way that we match these. It wouldn't matter if I had done this, or if I had done this, as long as it's valid in CSS syntax, we're only gonna match if there's a token in here that matches what our build variation is. So we can use strings, we can use numbers, anything that's valid in CSS, we're able to use inside of our matching. So the first thing I'm gonna do is filter the token types that have a value. So that gets rid of white space. White space doesn't have a value, it's just a white space token. So here, we're only really looking at things that have values. So if the string value of that token's value is equal to the variation. So here we have, for example, a number token whose value is three. So if the string three was equal to our build variation three, which it was in this case, that's how we end up seeing this rule. So that if statement passed, and we ended up processing that rule here. So how do we do that? For the rules, we're gonna push in um, each of the rules found inside. So here's one that had multiple. So two of these, we're going to parse each one of them as a rule. Then we're going to map all of the tokens to a string and then we're gonna spread that in. And so what we end up with here is actually the stringified rules. And so when we get here, that just kinda of outputs them at the end. So here, if I run this, it should still be the same. Um, I think we could even do stuff like this. If you want, you could wrap them in here just because of the way that we're matching. We've designed this to be really flexible. So that didn't like that. So that has a value. So that's a simple block with a value of that open bracket. So it didn't like that, but we could design it to only look inside one of those productions. Um, anyway, that's how you can support your own custom at rule in CSS. You parse CSS, you loop through what you find, you check the rules, you make decisions about what you find in there based on what else you know, you do any formatting that you may need to do to prepare the rules, and then you return the untouched rules that you didn't need to process as well as the rules that you did need to process after you've processed them based on the logic you needed. And then at the end, you end up with that. So this little bit here is just that one at rule we need, but if there's anything else that we need like you know, element we could do something like this and parse that. That's going to be run by a JavaScript plugin. So instead of outputting CSS, what we'd be doing here is we would be parsing and saying, you know, if there's an at rule that matches, you know, dash dash element then in here, what we would be doing is we would be parsing out the selector, we'd be parsing out the condition, and there could be multiple. And then once we have each of these conditions parsed out, uh, we can also 
do something with the rules. And in this case, because we need some kind of scoping, we have a self-referential selector. So that's another thing that you could handle and transform. Um, but ultimately, what you'd be doing would be outputting code written to call a JavaScript plugin. So this would be a JavaScript file or a piece of JavaScript that you'd have on the command line that you could save and then run, and it would interpret what this particular style was supposed to do. So that's another way that we can write CSS and process it server side or on the command line, even when the end result is that the styling information is something that is run by JavaScript client side. It doesn't have to be something that we are outputting as CSS text either. So there's a lot of flexibility with what we can design. There's a ton of flexibility in the syntax and the language. And when we're designing our own custom features, uh, namespacing everything with that double dash with no um, vendor prefix at all, it's just dash dash, it's our own. Um, really, the sky's the limit. I made this incredibly high level and declarative. This hooks in with other tools and it plays nicely with CSS because it is 100% valid CSS. It only means what I have made it mean. And to make it mean something didn't really take that much effort or design either. It's still very flexible and I can change it or update it depending on our needs. And uh, can't wait to put this into use. So hopefully that demystifies or sheds some light on how you can shape CSS to your own liking and at a very high level, uh, create the styling language of your dreams. If this video has meant something very special to you or has kind of opened your eyes to what CSS can be, it would be great if you could design a custom rule or something that would target the like button and press that. Um, if you could do that for me, that would be wonderful. And I could try to do my part and bring you more CSS videos. Hope you have a great day.